Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Z. It's January 16th, 2024. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below into our description area. Make sure you're signed up for our email distribution list so that way you can be notified whenever we post these videos. You'll also see which stocks are giving you overbought and oversold cluster signals at the bottom of those emails. In addition to that, we're heavy users of Twitter or X. If you're not doing so already, I would encourage you to follow me at Brandon Van Z. We really appreciate those of you that click like and repost with the Market Outlook related content. And then last but not least, we do have a presence on Facebook. Feel free to join our group at that web address you see in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's quick market recap. As you can see, I've got the S&P 500 pulled up here in front of us in the form of a heat map to kind of get a sense as to what stocks were driving the market in either direction. Today was a down day for the market. It seems like we've had a bit more selling pressure in 2024 than we were accustomed to at the end of 2023. Looks like we had a bit of a split from the Magnificent Seven perspective today. Remember, each day is a little different from that regard. Sometimes they're all in unison, either up or down. Today kind of felt like they were kind of all over the map, just depending upon circumstances. So let's go through them, see what we can learn. First things first, Microsoft, now the world's largest publicly traded company. They are going back and forth uh, against Apple for that crown, but stole it there from Apple here, I believe it was last week at some point. They had had it once uh, in the past years, uh, but for the most part, Apple has been the king uh, over the last decade or so. Uh, so this is a rare moment where uh, Microsoft is the world's most valuable publicly traded company. Anyway, they managed to close higher yet again today, up 0.46% on a day when Apple was down again, down 1.23%. You can see that NVIDIA was today's big winner from the Magnificent Seven perspective. Uh, in fact, NVIDIA was one of the top 10 best performing stocks in the entire S&P 500 today, up over 3%. I am happy to report that not only do we own Microsoft as a coffee can stock in my top-down trend trading class on Monday mornings, but we also have NVIDIA as a coffee can stock uh, in that same class. Uh, and to take that a step further, another stock that we own as a coffee can stock. Uh, Synopsys doesn't get as much press as NVIDIA or Microsoft, but today it was certainly in the news. It was up 3% here today, uh, as well as it sounds like they are going to be buying Ansys. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, kind of interesting to see that our coffee can stocks seem to really hold our whole account portfolio up today. We had more stocks down than up in our normal active traded part of that top down trend trading class account. But because we had so many big movers to the upside in the coffee can portion, it made up for that. So uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but uh, hey, that's what they're there for. Uh, happy that uh, it occurs uh, when, it, when it has the opportunity to. Uh, one stock that we don't own in the top-down trend trading class that I wish we did, especially on a day like today, is NVIDIA. I'm sorry, not NVIDIA, but uh, AMD, uh, an NVIDIA rival. AMD was up 8% today. That stock has been absolutely in fuego here uh, lately. So congrats to those of you who might be AMD shareholders out there. Other uh, semiconductor-related names uh, working well today included Micron and uh, MPWR, Monolithic Power Systems. Uh, they both closed nicely in the green. Qualcomm also in the green a bit there as well. So it seemed like today was uh, an impressive day there for the semiconductor area of the market. Elsewhere within tech, we had some big movers within software, including Cadence Design Systems. Uber was up a little bit. That's another one that we own in the active traded portion of our top down trend trading class. So we're happy to see Uber get a little bit of a move here today. Uh, you also found other semiconductor equipment names like Applied Materials and KLA 10 Core, both having nice days. Cisco, a, a name that we've bought multiple times in the dividend classes here at Market Scholars over the years, up a half a percent. Similarly, IBM, another name that we've bought plenty of times over the years, up about 0.7%. IBM has been kind of a sneaky outperformer here in recent months. It's not really the most exciting name to talk about, but pull up a, a chart of IBM here uh, recently and you'll see uh, what I'm referencing. They're kind of sneaky strong out there uh, here all of the sudden. 
So that's your tech roundup. In other areas of the market, I would say that communications had a little bit of green in there. Uh, you can see Verizon had a nice day up 1.8%. Nine percent. That's a nice dividend stock there, of course. Comcast was up today. That's one of the stocks we own in our current DGI portfolio, uh, and it was up 0.23 percent. Some of you might have heard the news over the weekend that uh, the big Chiefs and Dolphins game on Saturday night uh, was the biggest streaming event in history. Uh, that game was presented only on. Peacock as a streaming game and was not available on typical NBC or uh, other linear TV networks. So uh, Comcast shares benefited as they are the parent company of Peacock. Uh, you also saw that Disney had a nice day up about 3% today. So some nice movers there uh, within the communications area. You had some uh, good movers down below here in the discretionary area as well. We actually just bought uh, Starbucks in the DGI class account. It was up about 0.78% today. Tesla from a Magnificent 7 perspective was up a half a percent today. Home Depot uh, and Lowe's, both companies that we bought last year in the DGI GI class account uh, up nicely here today as there's been kind of a renewed enthusiasm around some of those home related names. Um, we had some 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 auto parts retailing companies that had really nice days. Uh, O'Reilly and AutoZone, a couple of the best performers in the S&P 500 today, each up nearly 4%. So some, some good movers there. Domino's Pizza uh, up about 3.5%. Imagine there were a few pizzas being eaten over the weekend uh, with all those NFL games. And congrats if your team won. I am sad to say uh, my Rams lost by one lousy point uh, to the Lions, but a uh, fun game nonetheless. So uh, hopefully your favorite team uh, advanced to, to next weekend's games. In the healthcare space, we had a few names that were up. Vertex is just a, it's a machine. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about Vertex in the past. Not only have we traded it in the top-down trend trading class uh, a couple of different times in recent years, but uh, it is also the partner of CRISPR Therapeutics, which, uh, by the way, got approved for a, a, a second indication here today, beta thalassemia uh, here in the United States. But Vertex is their big partner in those um, CRISPR-related drugs, and so uh, that stock was up another 1% here today and uh, has just been an, um, an outstanding performer for several years now. Uh, you can see that uh, not only was Vertex up in the health he healthcare space, but we saw uh, CVS Healthcare up 1% today. We saw Cigna up 0.6% uh, today, and we saw Molina Healthcare up one percent 2% today. So a bit more sporadic there, to be fair, uh, but at least some green in the healthcare area. Now let's turn our attention to the negative performers today, and we have a lot more of those than positive performers. Uh, first thing that catches my eye is probably energy. Um, not only is it pretty much a clean sweep where all of the oil and gas companies in the S&P 500 were lower today, but it was how much they were down. And you can see some really nasty movers to the downside there. Some of those names down 3 and 4%. So the brighter colored reds that we're seeing there. Other names are kind of spread throughout, but uh, equally as important, notice that Boeing had a terrible day. Of course, they've had some difficulties here after the news recently with uh, their, 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 their doors not being bolted on the way that uh, customers would expect. So Boeing was down another 8% today, down to $200. Nike had a challenging day, down 3% today. Netflix took a tumble today, down 2%. Meta, from a uh, Magnificent 7 perspective, down about 2%. Alphabet down just a touch uh, below break even. Uh, we saw Morgan Stanley have a really tough day. Uh, they were down 4% on the same day when Goldman was actually up. Goldman was a name that we bought in the DGI class portfolio last semester. And uh, with the earnings results that the big banks have been reporting here lately, sounds like Goldman's were a little bit better than anticipated, whereas Morgan Stanley uh, was quite disappointing. Uh, you can see that other banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, they all struggled here today as well. And then FinTech 
also struggled today with PayPal. Just cannot get out of its own way in the last three years. PayPal down another 4% here today. So um, I would say that it was pretty consistently red across most of the market here today. A few bright spots led in particular by NVIDIA. Let's take a look at the specific breadth numbers now. I've got this pulled up on the main part of the Thinkorswim platform here. Uh, the index watch for the S&P 500 suggests that 137 stocks out of the 500 in the S&P 500 closed in the green today. So that's good for only about 27% of stocks closing in the green. So without a doubt, today had a uh, definite bearish tilt towards it. That did uh, show up in the end results as well as we now are pulling up the four grid that I use for my presentations. And this is chart 4B for those of you that are following along at home with your own uh, charting package. Remember those of you that are premium members, not only do you get access to all 50 plus of our charts. And by the way, my DGI dividend stair step chart uh, has the, the calculations have been done. I spent a lot of hours over the weekend uh, getting those calculations all squared away. I'll be testing that for the next two weeks. And then those of you that are premium members will get the new stair step charts here uh, before February 1st. So I will communicate that with you guys in the classes when that is available. But uh, that is a key benefit for those of you that not only are premium members of Market Scholars, but hopefully many of you uh, will continue to renew with us as well. And right now we are in the key renewal season for those of you who are our original members back in 2018. So make sure you're taking advantage of those discounts as well. But the S&P 500, as you can see today, uh, through a little bit of a sale as well, it was down 0.37%. The Dow Jones was down 0.62%. The NASDAQ composite was down one point, or I'm sorry, 0.19%. So NASDAQ actually did the best out of these four today. It was down, but not down as much as the rest. And then the Russell 2000 did the worst. Small caps have kind of fallen out of bed here in the last couple of weeks. They were down another 1.21% today. You can see that with that downward move in the Russell 2000, not only are we down and trading below the 30-day moving average now, but we also have a weekly bearish intermediate posture using the market forecast technical indicator. So notice the background color of that chart is pink, whereas the background color of the other three charts at this moment remains green. So those other three, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt, and I think that makes sense, especially since they are still above their rising 30-day moving averages. But in this case, the Russell 2000 is telling us there is more weakness within its chart than we are seeing elsewhere. Uh, the moving average, by the way, is still going up, and that's why the moving average is colored yellow here as opposed to red. Remember, if price stays below the 30-day moving average and the moving average starts rolling over, that moving average will start getting painted red like it was back here. So we'll await that to see if it happens or not, but the possibility is certainly there. As I mentioned before, it just kind of feels like this market is just a touch different than it was at the end of last year where um, sellers are um, a little bit more aggressive than they were um, in that bullish run back in November and December. So we'll keep our eye on it, but uh, just so you know, we now have a weekly bearish posture for the Russell 2000. Remember, that has that's not something that's necessarily brand new. We've been dealing with that off and on since uh, basically January 4th here. But what's more important in my eyes today about it is not just that we have the weekly bearish posture, but now we have actually breached the moving average as well. Every other day except for today, we had not yet breached the moving average. So to me, that is somewhat more important and somewhat more bearish as a result. The others are in reasonably good shape, still riding those rising moving moving averages higher. Real quick here, on the uh, asset class 12 grid, this is chart 5A for those of you following along at home, be aware that treasury yields burst higher today. That could have been part of the reason we saw the struggle within the stock market. Remember, generally speaking, stock market likes it when interest rates fall, not rise. This was an important day for treasuries as well on the 10-year treasury yield, notice that we are now back above the 30-day moving average. This is the first time since going all the way back here to November 1st that the 10-year treasury yield is above its 30-day moving average. So, um, you know, we got to 
keep a close eye on that because that's the type of thing that can spiral out of control in a hurry. Naturally, when interest rates rise as they did today, bond prices themselves fell, which we saw with long-term US treasuries dropping nearly 2% today. Foreign bonds and high yield bonds also fell today. Gold prices fell, but retained their strongly bullish posture. Uh, oil prices fell, which probably uh, you know tells us why all those oil and gas stocks were down so violently today. Uh, US dollar was up. Remember, we don't like that either. So when interest rates are up and the US dollar is up, that's usually a bad thing for stocks, all else being equal. Uh, it provides headwinds there, and that's exactly what we found today, which could be part of the reason why commodities fell today along with foreign stocks. Notice that developed foreign stocks were down 1.68% with a weekly bearish posture. Emerging market stocks even worse. China is a house of pain right now. Emerging markets as a category down another 2.42% today. Strongly bearish posture trading below their falling 30-day moving average as well. All right, that's my 15 minutes. Uh, if you want me to get back on track with the hour-long presentations, I ask one simple request out of you. doesn't cost you a penny. just takes five seconds out of your time. T just click like for me there on Twitter. Uh, on the other hand, if you like these 15-minute quick hitter videos, then no need to change whatever you've been doing up until this point. So whatever you decide, I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. David should be back with you tomorrow. Until next time, best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.